Georgia. You never did learn to knock, did you? Max, I've got to talk to you. Never before breakfast, Georgia. Even an ex-wife should remember those little things. Would you care to join me in a little breakfast? No. Oh, Max, stop this. It's important. I have to talk to you. 
What time is it? Seven. Seven. Night or day? Night. In that case, you don't look bad, George. Well, it will have seen. Oh, Max, please listen to me. I need help. Help? Why come to me? Max, I wouldn't be here if I weren't desperate. Desperate? The whole world's desperate and I'm tired. Go away. Jeff is missing. What happened to Jeff? Well, it was yesterday. I went into New York to see about a job. I thought I could get some proofreading and that I could do at home and earn some extra money. And when I got home around 4 o'clock, there was a note from Fred. Oh, what has Fred, that charming brother of yours, got to do with it? Well, he lives with me. Since when? About a year ago. Choo-choo train. Well, you see, Jeff loves to ride on the train. Back? Fred must no, I waited up all night. I haven't been asleep. Who's this at all. elder? He's the doctor Fred shares an office with. I've never liked him, but Fred says that. What are the police that? Max, I haven't been to the police. What? That's it. I'm so frightened, Max. It's this Dr. Elder. He keeps warning me not to go to the police. He said he won't be responsible for anything. Why? I don't know why. He won't even tell me where Fred went. Oh, Max, Jeff is so little. If, if anything happens, I, I can't think about it. Where do I find this elder? He's in his office across the hall from me every night from 8 to 10. Gives me an hour. I'll be there. Don't say anything. I won't, Max. Georgia. Got a picture of Jeff? It's been a long time. Taken about six months ago. Thanks, Max. It's mine too, you know. You will come. I said I'd be there. Sober house, Dick. Say, go ahead. I said no. What's eating you? My kid's missing. Your kid? Say, I didn't even know you had a kid. Yeah, I got one. Only the last time I saw him, he wasn't even old enough to sit up by himself. Uh, I can imagine how you must feel on your way to cops. No, no cops. Snatch? I don't know. That's what I'm going to find out for myself. Hey, listen, you've been out of the game a long time, Max. And what comes out of these bottles ain't no health tonic. Smitty, you're going to give me that five okay, bucks, or aren't you? Okay, okay, okay. Thanks. 
Take it out of next week. You know anything about a guy called Elder? Dark Elder? I know what I know because I keep it to myself. Smitty, I told you my kid was missing. Do you know anything about a guy called Doc Elder? Run out of Philadelphia a while back for sewing up gun wounds. Shifty. Thanks. Got any cigarettes? Yeah. Get your own. Is Elder mixed up in this? From what Georgia says, yes, he is. In what way? I don't know. Look, when are you going to get this thing fixed? Take it easy, son. Take it easy. I phoned about it today. This thing chews up half your smokes. You're so wound up, you're going to throw a spring. Yeah, I know. See you later. I'll be here when you want me. <laughs> He'd be gone, but there's still a light under his door. Are you all right? I'm sober, if that's what you mean. Be careful, Max. Come in, please, and close the door. I said close the door. I expect Mr. Otto Vargas recommended me. Huh? I've been waiting for a call from one of Vargas's friends. Just raise your hands, please, for the examination. I said raise your hands. I like to conduct my examination in my own way. Hmm. No gun. Sit down, please. No, you're not the man I thought you were. Vargas wouldn't send a man over here in your condition. My curbstone diagnosis of you is a good physique gone to pot. Right now, you're suffering from a bad hangover. Well, I know my diagnosis of you. You're a shifty eye out for a fast buck with the guts of an angle worm. Who are you? I'll ask the question. Where's your partner, Fred Mason, my boy? Your boy, huh? So that's who you are. Answer my question or there's going to be trouble. There won't be any trouble. I've had patients like you in here before. Never any trouble. Haven't time for trouble. Besides, I've got a very important engagement. You'd better leave. Everything will be fine in a moment.
goodbye, Mr. Thursday. I'm not going any place. I'm afraid you must. Not until you answer my question. Licorice, eh? Yes. Licorice. Imported, too. Pleasant. It's a little illegal. You've had plenty of experience in Pennsylvania with the illegal, haven't you, Mike? It's time for you to go. Past time. You want me to go answer my question? Where's my boy? I'm afraid I don't know where Dr. Mason and your boy are. You're lying, Doctor. I think I'll just wait around and meet your friend, Mr. St. Paul. Do you know Mr. St. Paul, Mr. Thursday? I know a lot of things. Oh, no, you don't. You're a dipso, a drunk. You know what you are? You're nothing but a low-down lout. I'm afraid you're right. I am. Max, wake up. Hey, Max. Wake up, kid. Come on. Up. Come on. Here's some coffee for you. Try it. It'll do you good. Come on. It won't be bad. Sean is good. You got a good memory, Max. A mop to squeeze this out. <laughs> How'd I get in here? Well, they picked you up last night about 10 o'clock, the prowl car. Well, you were lying out in the rain. Yeah, rain. Nelda. How long have I been in here? About 12, 14 hours. I gotta get out of here. All right, you will. You gotta see Captain Tonetti first. Though. Oh, Tonetti. I don't want to see Tonetti. Those are orders, Max. All right, let's get it over. Come on, let's go. time. Yeah. Sit down. I gotta get out of here, Mark. Sit down, Max. This is a lousy business. I should have been a priest like my mother wanted. Get the confessions either way. Never mind the jokes. What happened, Max? What's happened to you? Liquor was imported and I'm used to rock gut. I don't mean last night. We'll get to that later. I mean you. You. Look at yourself. There's no law says I have to listen to this, is there? Yes, there's a law. We were friends. I've got a right to know. I thought you had guts. I'll worry about my guts. You just give me that little slip of paper and I'll leave. You let the newspapers beat you. That's what you did. I understand about the Folger case. No sleep, tension, waiting 72 hours for that hoodlum to walk through the door. I would have had a bottle handy myself. But just tough that a lousy reporter got a whiff of the whiskey and turned on the heat. Why do we have to go through all that again? Because I've got to know what's happened to you. All right. So the papers massacred you. And you were on every front page for a week. And I had to suspend you. But that don't knock out a copper like you. You knew sooner or later you'd be back here with me. What happened, Max? What happened? Decided to stop being a cop. I don't believe it. Not you. You like being a cop. You liked it better than anything in the world. I just didn't know about cops, Mark. What are you talking about? Ask Georgia. Ask her what they're like in the house. They like to shove people around. 
They're bad for their kids. They neglect their wives. They like violence. They carry guns. There's muscle men that like to use their muscles, you know that. That's a lot of... Oh, yeah. The rug was pulled out from under me here. You know what Georgia said? She said, this was my big chance. A big chance to stay out. You know, I believed her. Well, what does a muscle man do when he can't use his muscles? Well, he becomes a longshoreman, file clerk, cabbie, or an insurance salesman. Maybe you don't know about insurance salesmen. Well, I'll tell you. It's a little different from being a cop. You don't tell people, you ask them. You ask them and you smile until your face aches. You call up people you hardly even know. Guys you played poker with ten years ago. Guys you once did a favor for. Guys you can't stand the sight of. You walk right in and you smile and they smile back cop who got thrown off the force because he was drunk. That's to be kind of a joke, see? It's tougher and tougher to walk in. One day you take a drink to help. The next time you decide maybe two would be better. And then one day you decide to take three drinks and not walk in at all. You fill in the rest, Mark. Now can I get out of here? I say, can I get out of here? Sorry, Max. We're going to take a look at a body. I'm not interested in looking at a body. You should be. The body's named Elder. Take off the blanket, Doc. It ain't neat, Mark. Nobody's going to faint. Take it off. Okay. Here he is. What hit him? I figure a 25 caliber rifle. What about those bruises on the side of his neck? Oh, a contusion. He got poked. With what? You tell me. Whatever it is, knocked him out before he was shot. Which was when? Well, let's say somewhere between 8.30 and 10.30. Now, can I put him away, or do you want him on permanent exhibition? Well, I've had enough performance. Let's get back to the office. You better start dreaming up some bright answers. Put him on ice, Vic. I want you to tell your story just as you told it to me this morning. Didn't you know I'm suspect number one, no alibi? Mark, I... Go on with your statement. About five minutes after Max arrived last night, the phone rang. Right? Yes, I... And? Well, I couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman on the phone. The voice just said if I hurried down to the drugstore at the corner of Cranberry and Henry Street that... I'd hear about Jeff and Fred. So I, I rushed out of the house and got a taxi and went there. And when I, when I got there, there was nobody in the store but the proprietor, and he didn't know what I was talking about. So I, so I got another taxi and went back home. And as the taxi drove up in front of the house, I... I saw the front door open. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold it, Jay. Is this something you didn't tell me this morning? Oh, Mark, I was so upset this morning, I don't know what I told you. I do. You told me you got home around 10 o'clock. Saw nothing, heard nothing, and went right to bed. Well... Oh, Mark, that isn't true at all. It, I mean, that isn't what really happened. Uh, it was much earlier, probably around 9.30. And as I sat in the taxi in the front of the house, I saw Dr. Elder helping Max down the steps. And you just waited in the cab? You didn't speak to him? Well, well, Max had been drinking, and he doesn't like me to see him that way. That ought to do it just fine. Only it's a little dangerous. Dangerous? For you, I mean. It involves you pretty deep. Deeper, I imagine, than you really know. A false alibi. Now, wait a minute, Mark. Save that for the station house. Who says that Georgia's statement isn't true? Now, how about that slip of paper that gets me out of here? 
I can crack that alibi any time I want to, and you know it. For the time being, I'm going to let it ride. Now, how about letting loose with some of that information you pried out of Elder? You're wrong. I didn't have any. Maybe you can convince him that the police department has a better chance of finding your boy than he has. Maybe he'll talk to you. Go ahead, say it. There's nothing to say. It's my fault. I should have remembered Elder kept a bottle of Perno handy. All right, so I got drunk. What do you want me to do? Want to stand in a corner and write I won't do it again a hundred times? Is that what you want? All I want is Jeff back. You're going to tell Mark everything you found out from Elder. I'll play this my way. I've seen your way. That wasn't the last bottle in the world. That's not happening again, you understand? Yes. Yes, I understand, Max. Just as I understood two years ago, remember? It wasn't going to happen again then either. Was it the next day? Or the day after? That was two years ago. You're going to tell Mark everything you found out from Elder. Everything. Or I'm going to tell him I lied about seeing you leave the house. I don't know why I did it anyway. I'll tell you why you did it. Because you know I didn't kill Elder. I want Jeff back too. And I know what I'm doing. I was good when I was on the force, you know that. You said it yourself, Max. That was two years ago. Two very long years. Listen, this is no ordinary kidnapping. There's nothing to go on. There's nothing to hold on to. There's no answer to, to how or why. What makes you think you can get the answers? Do you think anybody on this force, even Mark, will go after this the way I will? I've got to get that boy. I've got to get him before those police badges start showing up in all the wrong places and this whole mess explodes. And it will explode. I'm not trying to throw a scare into you, Georgia. But when it does, anything can happen. You understand anything. And I'm laying off the bottle. All I need is a little more time. There is no time. All right, so there isn't any more time. I'll have to do without it. Tell Mark anything you want. Feel any better, kid? Not much. Soap and water help. I'll be back. Oh, no. Things didn't go so well, huh? No. Zanetti tried to pin Elder's murder on me. A murder? Say, didn't know it'd be that tough. Yeah, it's tough. I need your help, Smitty. Me? Were the cops in it? Huh. Doesn't mean I'm out of it. Did you get any talk out of Elder? No, he waved a bottle into my nose. Oh, well, a couple of slugs wouldn't do you any harm right now. More than a couple. Have I ever complained? Go ahead, go ahead, drink it. Just say, now, what the... I'm sorry, Smitty. Don't oh, forget it. It's better than furniture polish. Keep the cord in the bottle and don't offer me another drink. The 24 hours gone already. There isn't that much time. Oh, slow down, kid. Slow down. What did you get out of Elder besides the shakes? I know that he's afraid of a guy named Barkas. First thought I was one of Barkas's men. Hmm. Sure thought about that. Who is he, Smitty? It's the only shirt I could find. It cost me a buck ninety-eight. Okay, I'll take care of it. It's the best I can do on your coat. Thanks, Irving. All they had was pastrami, boss. I don't want any pastrami. There isn't that much time. You're gonna take time if you want any talk from me. You ought to know better, Max. She always gets her way. Okay, okay, Harvey. Go out and cover the desk. Say, when are you gonna get a rubber tip for that pogo stick? What about Barkas? Snake. Says he's in the importing business. <laughs> he imports all right. When the customs boys go out for their beers. Smuggling, huh? Where does he hang out? Oh, oh, Otter don't hang out. Oh, no. He's, he's a big operator. Got his own plush line warehouse. Where is it? 
Guys like him don't have welcome on the doormat. I say, where is it? Red Hook, Brooklyn. Now, the Gowanus Canal. Thanks, my dear. I'll put you in my will. You better start acting with some sense of the be reading it sooner than you expect. I'm acting the way I'm acting because my boy is missing and I'm getting him back. One more question. You know anybody named St. Paul? Who? St. Paul. That a guy's name? Yeah. Elder was expecting him last night. Who is he? You and on me. Are you holding out on me? Holding out? When I gave you a bed and a meal and a, and a job? Not to mention extra money on the side for liquor. Don't want to hear any more about holding out. Okay. Forget it. Likewise. No fellow around here called Marcus. Well, that Milton over here. That's his. Thanks. Okay. around. Why do you want to know? Because I want to see it. So does a lot of other people. But you can try. Take the elevator back there. Third floor. End of the line, Jack. Hey, Jack, did you just come up for the ride, or you have something on your mind? I'm looking for Otto Vargas. Okay. What's your business? My own. You ready for the ride down, Jack? Okay. Just tell him that I had a message for him from Doc Elder. Send him in, Bert. Come on. Hold it. Johnny. Nothing. Let's go.
36. Whatever you gotta say, say it quietly and get out. I ain't in good shape. I got a condition, see? Be in a lot worse condition if the cops knew that Elder was scared you were gonna knock him off. I keep very calm, see? Very calm. That's orders. I don't get excited. You had a lot of them, Bert handles all the excitement for me. You ever see this mug before? No, I haven't. You're a tough boy, ain't you? What's your name? Thursday. Thursday, eh? Max Thursday, maybe? That's it, Max Thursday. I thought you looked familiar. You're the one that got Red Folger with a gun and a quart of whiskey in your gullet. I always liked Red. Red was a good guy. I gotta stop doing things like that. It's bad for me. What's all this talk about Elder? I was with him two hours before he was shot. You thought at first I was one of your boys. But I'd see you about it before I saw the police. Don't try any threats with me. What were you doing with Elder? The same thing I'm doing here. I'm looking for his partner, Dr. Fred Mace. You give me a lead on him and I'll keep my mouth shut about you. You see what I mean, Bert? Tough. You got a lot of guts coming in here. You must think you're still on the force. Are you taking my proposition or leaving it? A lot of guts. Too many. What's your answer? Sit down. All right. What's this fellow Mace got you on so bad? He's got my boy with him. Oh, that's it. Your kid's with her. Well, that's too bad, ain't it, Bert? Otto, you know the doc's... Ah, oh, my first cigar in three days. Don't give me no schmooze about no doc. Get out there and work that erector set. Build yourself a Ferris wheel. Get out of here! Give you a lead. You ever hear of a hoodlum named Stitch Oliveira? No. Bad boy, Stitch. He's from Boston. He's got a scar from here to here. And he takes it out on anybody that gets in his way. I hear he's in town on a special job. Very special job. That's his connection. I'm just telling you to keep an eye out for him. And if you find him, I'll pay you a grand. That's so you'll know him in case you run across him. I got some special friends. Get me little pictures like that. See who's coming up on the elevator, Bert. Now, if you're smart, you'll clam up about this. Maybe I'll play it smart. Where'll I find St. Paul? A guy like you can make an awful lot of trouble for himself. What do you know about St. Paul? I just want to find him. So do a lot of people. Locate Oliveira and we'll get to St. Paul. That's why it's worth a grand to me. Then maybe we'll do business. 
Maybe. Now get out. I gotta take my pulse again. It's jumping. Get out. St. Paul seems to make a lot of people nervous. Go on. Get out of here. Get out. It seems to be your trouble, honey. I like the smell of your perfume, honey. The name's Angel. You don't have to prove it to me. I uh, hate to break you two lovebirds up, but he's waiting. You know where Dalio's is? No. Well, it's on 8th and Flatbush, and don't come there about 10.30 or so, because... That's where I work. Thanks for the tip. Let's go, baby. Okay. All right, your next check. She a friend of Arcus's? You know, Jack, I think I'd like to have oh about a ten grand policy on your life. You'd never be around to collect it. <laughs> What's the time? 20 minutes to wait. If I were you, Jack, I'd make every minute count. dark. I've been waiting here all day. I don't think I can wait much longer. What happened to my blue-coated ex-buddies across the way? The last one's left about 1.30. When you rang the doorbell, I thought, I thought it's the police again, and they found Jeff, and he's, he's not alive. Jeff's alive, all right. Well, Max, you found out something. No, not yet. But I believe that he's alive, and you've got to believe that too, Georgia. Listen, when I came here last night, there was a girl just leaving, a blonde. She had on a brown raincoat and a beret. Yes, I remember. She was here to see Elder. Who was she? I never paid any attention to any of his patients. They were all cheap and strange. Well, didn't Fred know what kind of a doctor this Elder was? Well, I suppose he knew, but Elder was paying most of the rent, and I think he was loaning Fred money besides. That would make a happy difference with Fred. It was because of some girl. He, he couldn't stop seeing her. What was her name? I never even saw her. I think he met her through Elder. Georgia, did you ever hear Fred or Elder talk about a man called St. Paul? No. You're sure now? Because this is important. Oh, please, Max. No more questions, please. I, I can't think straight. Please. All right. No more questions. Any whiskey in the house? Whiskey? Yes, where is it? There's always a bottle in Elder's office. I should have remembered that. Max, you can't. past eight? I'm going back to Elder's office and have a look around for myself. There's got to be some piece of an answer.
I told you to get some sleep. I can't. Do you mind if I sit in here? I, I don't want to be alone. Do anything you like. I have to ask you something. Okay, go ahead. Why did you leave me? Some other time, Georgia. Was it because you stopped loving me? Is that why you started drinking? Let's forget it, Georgia. What you need is some sleep. I was wrong about you being a cop. Here, take one of these. What are they? Something to help you relax. You're too wound up for that whiskey to do any good. Just throw it against the back of your throat and swallow. All right, lie down. Now just forget about everything, huh? Some things you can't forget. No matter how hard you try. Too many things to remind you. Like this robe, for instance. Remember? Yeah, I, I remember. There were some good days. Weren't there, Max? Sure, there were good days. There were some of the best. so stingy that he'd save his tobacco from cigarette butts. Throw away a perfectly good sponge, huh? What do you mean, nothing? Time is it? It's 10.30. You, you got a nickel? this character? Yeah, I know. You want I should get rid of him? No, I want you should go away. 
You make me feel like I got wrinkles in my stockings. What happened to your other sucker, Angel? Did he run out a $10 bill? Why don't you get out of here? Go on. Flow. <laughs> Charlie. Yeah? Give me a drink. Well, your friend here says he don't want anything. Oh, he'll take the same as I have. Uh, not for now. Look, I don't work here for my health. I get a cut. Oh. You know, you shouldn't be working for a living. No. What should I be doing? Oh, I don't know. Lying on a nice, warm Florida beach with me, right alongside you, maybe. You know, you and I would make a great combination once we started playing together. What makes you think that we'd be playing together? I just got an idea. Haven't you? Maybe. Just don't rush me, friend. Who's gonna rush you when you're on Otto Vargas's list? I'm on nobody's list. I wouldn't let that gorilla hold my hand. He's just a, you know, a business acquaintance. Yeah. He's also the inventor of the double cross. He's not gonna double cross me because I got something he wants. He's gonna pay plenty for it. Do you mean Vargas is gonna pay you for something he wants? Oh, baby, I thought you had a brain. I got one all right, don't worry. Listen, Varkas takes what he wants. One squawk out of you and you're gonna wake up some morning under a pier with that pretty face of yours down. What are you trying to do, scare me? <laughs> Funny man sitting there talking, not even touching your drink. You've had a glass in your hand before, I can tell that. Well, I was just staying sober long enough to give you a little advice. No, Tavarkas, you're nothing but a two for a nickel day. He can get rid of you any rainy afternoon. You know, I don't like that kind of talk. Charlie, give us a couple of more drinks, and this time put some ice in them. Right. You interested in ice, Angel? Hmm? It's a nice hunk of it. Remember, Dr. Elder? Elder? Oh, hey, you aren't the one who... Well, I got it, haven't I? Gee, yeah. I, 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 I didn't know you were that kind of an operator. I always get what I want, baby. Oh, what, what do you want now? You, rest of the ice. Oh, well, I, I, I don't know anything about it. I, I... Look, you were at Elder's the night he was shot. How do you know that? I... Say, who are you anyhow? Oh, I'm just that fellow that wants to drive you down the Florida beach in a nice yellow convertible. You keep monkeying around with Varkas, and the only ride you're going to take is going to be in a hearse. Why don't you get out of here? I think you're too smart for this world. Go on, get out of here. OK. Sorry I won't be seeing you around. No, wait a minute. Uh -uh. All right. But I, I need a drink first, OK? OK. All right, what you got? The rest of the necklace. You got it? Well, I got the guy who knows where it is. Fred Mays. Yeah. The boy doctor lies there crying, hates me, hates himself. Where is he? Oh, I got him hidden away just fine. Is he alone? Sure he's alone. I haven't got a kid with him. I don't know anything about any kid. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. You're trying to do break my wrist on me. What kind of a deal did you make with Vargas? 50-50. I 
figured if Freddy wouldn't talk to him, I'd get one of Otto's men to come to him. Was Elder working for Varkas? No, he was working for some guy called St. Paul. St. Paul? Yeah, St. Paul had the contacts to smuggle stuff into the country, and Elder was the pickup man. Do you know St. Paul? No, I never seen him. But boy, Elder was sure scared of him. That's why he had Freddy pick up the stuff for him. Freddy kept the stuff for himself, huh? Freddy? <laughs> no, he dumped it someplace. And then he got himself all shot up by someone who was just out to hijack him and then crawl back to me like a bleeding pig. I went to Elder that night. I told that grifter he'd have to pay me plenty. And the next day, I read that he's bumped off. Well, I figured maybe that's little Angel's big chance. But will Freddy boy talk to me? Oh, no. Start shouting, calling me names, acting as if he sprouted wings all of a sudden. That's why I thought maybe one of Otto's boys might be the one to talk to him. I guess I, I should have thought more about it. I... You know, we better get to Mace before Barkas does. No, Barkas doesn't know where he's hidden. You don't think he's trying to find out? Well, I hadn't thought about that. Look, is there a back door to this place? Yeah, back there. Get out of here. Something. What's eating you? Well, guys have been lying to me all my life. Why should you be any different? Here. Why should you? Why don't you tell me? Look. I'll show you. Gee, maybe you are different. kidding me about that Florida deal, were you? Well, you ought to see me in one of those Riviera bathing suits with the middle missing. Oh, I'm a wow. Yeah, yeah. Look, how, how far is this place? Huh? Oh, it's just a couple of streets. Or don't move. You know, you and this ex-cop over here, lady, you shouldn't try to double-cross Otto Marcus because he just doesn't like it. Ex-cop. Shut up and come down the stairs to both of you and don't try anything funny. Uh, look, I didn't mean to double-cross you. I, I, sure, stuck in front sure, of me, I know I'm... all about it, but why don't you tell it to Otto? It'll be a lot funnier then. Uh, I'll come down here, the both of you. Uh, <laughs>
Perhaps you're hurt. It's okay. It's just a flesh wound. Get in there on the table, Max. Wait a minute. Get me a drink, Georgia, will you? Homicide Bureau, Detective Johnson speaking. Well, Johnson, this is Max Thursday. Yes, Lieutenant. I mean, Mr. Thursday. Will you put me on to today? It's urgent. Sure. He's not in right now, but if you leave your number, I'll have him call you. Okay. Have him call me as soon as possible. Tell him I'm at Triangle 72062. You got it? Yeah, yeah, I got it. That's important, remember? Okay, okay, Thursday. Relax, relax. Tell him it's about my... What did he want? Wanted to talk to Tonetti. Sound like he was tanked up or something. Give me another drink, will you? And here on the table, Max. Oh, Max. It's okay. Can't do it, Georgia. It's all right. I can do it. Lie down here. I'll get you another shirt. Fred has lots of them upstairs. I always got to him, George. To Jeff? No, to Fred. I was within 50 feet of him. Within 50 feet of finding out where Jeff is. That almost again, George, almost. Oh, darling, don't say that. It's always almost until you get there. Some people never get there, do they? It's gonna hurt. Now do that again, shall we? It's all over with the bandaging. I, I had to clean it. Give me a cigarette, will you? My coat pocket. Not bad at that. Fred was shot by somebody while he was picking up some diamonds that Elder was smuggling. Is he... is he badly hurt? I don't know. I didn't get to talk to him. Go on, Max. Tell me. I did tell you. I didn't get to talk to him. But you know where he is. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of Barkers' boys dragged him out. Max. Max, what about Jeff? I don't know. Why didn't the medic call me up? <laughs> I've got to have another drink, George. I need lots of drink. I kid ourselves. Snitty was right. I shouldn't have gotten mixed up in it. You shouldn't have gotten mixed up in it? You're Jeff's father. Georgia, you just fixed up a bullet wound in me. You want to know why I didn't shoot first? I used to be pretty quick on the draw, remember? Yes. I didn't shoot first because I didn't have a gun. Now, I didn't have a gun because I could hit a pop bottle in front of my nose. Look. That's with a couple of drinks in me. You put a revolver there and it's a palsy. I'm just a burned out cop. Oh, that's not true. You've proved it's not true in the last two days. I've been going on my nerves and I haven't any left. Let Tanetta take care of this. Leave me alone. No. No, you're not quitting. What do you want from a guy with the shakes? I've gone as far as I can. You haven't gone as far as you can until you're dead. Georgia, I'm trying to tell you. I know what you're trying to tell me, and I don't care. I don't care if you're drunk the rest of your life. I don't care if we never see each other again. I don't care if they kill you or me. It's Jeff. That's why you're not quitting. I won't let you. I say let Tonetti take care of this. At least he knows what he's doing. No. No, you told me nobody, not even Tanetti, would go after him the way you would. I believe it. If you haven't got a gun, go without one. If you can't walk, crawl. 
but you're going to bring Jeff back. You can't fail him, Max. You can't. Smitty? Yes, Max. I'm on my way down to Vargas's warehouse. I need a gun. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm okay. Smitty. There's a drugstore at the corner of Cranberry and Henry. Have Harvey meet me down there in 15 minutes, huh? Thanks. How about that shirt?
the last half hour. The guy with his car. Not through that door, maybe the back way. What happened to you? They gotta be here, Harvey. They've gotta be here. It makes sense. What? Who? I'm searching the place. Every room. Max, it's after four. So what? Kids, you look a mess. What's happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. That's what's wrong. I need a drink. Just as you say, kid. It come to the end of the street, Max. Yeah. Take that up to your room and get some rest. You told me on the phone last night you knew where Mace was. Yeah, I knew, but Oliveira got there first. Oliveira, huh? Yeah. He got away. These came out of his pocket. That's why I came back here. I, I thought maybe. <laughs> Probably a hundred machines in town that split a pack like that, Max. Yeah. It's a long chance. You're right, Smitty. Rummy shouldn't get mixed up in a mess like this. Get yourself some sleep, kid. Sleep? The bottle will help. And I was a smart guy that knew all the answers. Relax, Max. You found Oliveira as the guy you wanted, and... Uh, it wasn't Oliveira. No, uh, there's been one name from the beginning, just one. St. Paul. That's who Oliveira was working for. That's who Varkas was really afraid of. And Elder. Elder was working for St. Paul, too. He tried to double-cross him. St. Paul made an appointment and knocked him off. Polish off the bottle, Max. Get yourself some rest. 
No, it wasn't only that rip pack of cigarettes that made me come back here. It was something to do getting the gun from you. The telephone. That's it, the telephone. Now you're getting yourself all worked up over nothing, Max. Oh, look, Smitty, I called you from George's and I asked you for a gun. I told you I was going down to Barkus's warehouse to get mace. And Oliveira got there first. How do you know about it? Because somebody. Somebody could listen in on our phone conversation. And somebody in this hotel loused me up with a phony gun. <laughs> now you're really going off the deep end, son. Now. Well, I'm right, Smitty. I'm right, I feel it. St. Paul gave the order to Oliveira. St. Paul was the one who knew about our telephone. It makes sense. Max, my own name don't make sense when it gets to be this late. How's about adjourning? You walked right in and, and blasted Elder with that 25, with that 25 caliber. Elder was scared that night. He was ready and waiting with a pop gun all his own. He didn't pull the trigger. Why didn't he? He must have seen St. Paul's gun. No. That's it. He didn't shoot because he didn't see the gun. He couldn't. Nobody could. It was concealed. Smitty, you remember reading in the paper about... about how Elder was poked in the neck with a sharp instrument before he was shot. Remember? That was it. St. Paul had to knock out Elder before he could even get at the gun. It's probably carried around in something very ordinary looking, like a like a cane. Or a crutch. Yes, or a crutch. It had to be somebody who could listen in. Somebody who knew everything that was going on. Have another drink, Max. It wasn't Harvey. It wasn't a crutch. Smitty, you see your umbrella? You were a smart kid. Might have figured you'd get too smart. My friend, standing behind the desk giving me advice and all the time you knew about my boy. Had nothing to do with your boy. Well, you had some idea, didn't you? Didn't you? Well, an idea maybe. Why didn't you tell me? Is your tongue ripped out? Stakes were big, Max, and needed your help. My help? First, I tried to keep you out of it. And I found I couldn't, I decided to use your brain to help me find Mace. So I could get my hands on him. And then on the diamonds. <laughs> it's a good plan, Max. It has worked. You murdered. You stole. You kept my boy away from his mother. Oh, I know what you're thinking. But you don't know what it's like to be old with nothing to look back on, nothing to look forward to except more of the same. Five years ago I started to first small jobs and big ones. And this job, the biggest of the lot, a string of diamonds that'll keep me like a queen for the rest of my life. Oh, shut up. You make me sick. I'm telling you, Max. 
telling you because I want you to know. It's my big chance, Max. And nothing or nobody's going to stop me. You understand? Nobody. Not even you. Where's my boy, Smitty? Where's my boy? Answer me. First you do the answering. What are you going to tell Tanetti? Tanetti? That's right. Tanetti. What is it, Max? Cop or friend? Which side are you on when the chips are down? Not your side, Smitty. <laughs> Say, that ain't a smart answer for a guy in the spot you are. I thought you wanted to get your kid back. Oh, I'm getting him back. What did Oliveira do with Mace? Mace? Maybe you can get him to talk to you. Thursday. Max. Max. Fred, what happened to Jeff? Where is he? That's why I haven't talked. I was afraid they'd kill me. You'd never know. I had to do it, Max. I owed Elder 5,000. He said, Where is Jeff? Boarding house. I picked up the diamonds. I left him there. It's just for an hour. Because he was a nice woman, Max. I've been followed. That's not important right now. What's the address of this boarding house? Doctor, as soon as I leave here, send him around. Thanks for taking care of Jeff as long as you could. It's gonna be all right. See you later. Okay, Smitty. Start backing up. I never did like him, Max. One less to split with. I said, start backing up. All right, Max. Now open the door. What do you got in mind, kid? Cut you in the heart, Max. You and me, nobody else. What do you got to get in, son? Police department. Maybe get yourself back on the force for peanuts a month. Maybe at his head. Hello, this is Thursday. Max Thursday. Holding a prisoner at the Riverview Hotel. Two hundred thousand. That's a lot of money, Max. You can get yourself a lot of things with that. I'm getting what I want. Uh, Max, uh, we're, we're friends. You are... Uh, you... Wouldn't pull that trigger on me. 
Would you mind? Cop stuff. You're talking to a cop, sir. 